Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school computer science teacher, and today we're going to look at how to use generic types in Java to make our data structures more versatile. Uh, so in a previous assignment for my online class, I asked my students to create a stack object, uh, which included two, two classes, a stack and a stack element, which held the individual values, uh, and that was going to store int values. And then we realized that if we wanted to store something different, let's say char values or doubles, or strings, we would have to modify the definition of the entire stack class, which was not very practical. And so we need something a little better than that. Now what I'm going to show you today, generics, these are used for um, only for storing objects. They're not useful for primitive values, so they're not good for things like ints. But instead we can store things in wrapper classes like the integer class. So if you haven't used wrapper classes before, they're pretty straightforward. Go ahead and look that stuff up or you feel free to ask me questions and I can explain them to you. So our, our major change here is that when the stack gets created, we are going to have to define which type of objects it will store. And so different stacks can store different types of objects. Uh, one stack though only stores one type. So we do it like this. We put in angle brackets next to the name of the class, we put a parameter we use T by convention for type. Uh, sometimes you'll see E used for element as well. And there are other things. You can put anything you want there. But it's a good idea to use T for type. And so T is the type of value uh, stored in this stack. Okay, and we're going to need to do exactly the same thing with stack element because it's going to be holding a value of a certain type as well. So let's do that. type of value stored in this stack element. Okay, so far so good. So we have declared that the stack and the corresponding stack element must have a certain type. So let's see then, that type uh, is going to have to be applied anywhere where normally we would have said something like int or char or string. We're going to use that type uh, instead to help us declare those things. Okay, so let's start off. Before we had the int size, we're still going to need that. And before we also had a stack element, which we called next, oh, sorry, not next, a uh, top, which was going to be the top of the stack. Now we're going to have to fix this just a bit. We're going to call it stack element, and we're going to pass in the parameter t. Whatever, when the stack gets created, we get this parameter t. We're going to use that parameter here. That value gets sort of passed along to uh, to this spot in, in the code. It's inside of our braces here. So that t is the same as this t. Okay, let's create our constructor for the class. Public stack. Doesn't need anything here. Uh, it'll have to take the parameter when it, when it gets called because of this right here. And we're going to say size equals zero. And we're going to say top equals null. No items in the stack just yet. Okay, let's move back over to our stack element class save what we've done. The constructor for this is going to be uh, a, little, a little more involved. So let's see, first of all we're going to need to store um, a value. Now before we had something like int value. We don't have that now. We're going to use t, t value. That's it, that's a type. So even though it's a kind of a weird word, that's going to be what we use in place of a type. And we're also going to need a stack element which is going to have the same type, t. That's our next element. Now, our stack element constructor is going to take a value and a next uh, link. The value doesn't have, it's not an int value anymore. We just replace that with the t. It's whatever type of value. And then it's going to have a next variable coming in as well, which is going to be of type stack element with the t. So far so good. Let's store these values. Uh, this dot value equals value and this dot next equals next. Okay, so we have everything pointed the way that we should so far. Alright, let's head over back to the uh, stack object here. We're going to do our getters and setters in a little while. Uh, if we have time. So our public stack uh, object here is going to need that push method. Let's start off with that. Public void push. 
Now push has to receive a value from the user. It will be of type t. And let's call that new value, just to make it a little easier on us. Well, that has to be stored in a stack element. So we make a stack element of type t, and we'll call it, let's say, new element. It equals a new stack element of type t, and the parameter that we give it is new value and the top. Okay, so I put this t in here like this. You don't actually have to, but it's really good practice to do that. You can see here there's a redundant arguments used. To be clear, let's do that for now. So that points the, uh, it makes a new stack element, it sticks the new value into it, and it makes it point to the what is currently at the top of the stack, and then we repoint top at the new element. And we increase the size by one. And so now we've pushed a new element onto the stack. So we retreat, uh, we received a value, we made a stack element of the correct type, and we pushed it on top of the stack. Okay, let's do public, um, well, we're gonna do a uh, pop, we're gonna receive a value back, it will be of type t. So the return type is t, we do a pop, no parameter needed for that, it's returning a t value. And so we're going to retrieve and also remove at the same time the stack element from the top. So, so stack element, let's call it um, old top equals top. It's going to be the, the value that we get off the top. Um, let's just do one thing here. If old top was null, we're going to return null. We don't want to accidentally, we don't want to try to access that value if we have, um, if there is no nothing in the uh, array. We could also right here do if size equals zero, return null. That'll do the same thing for us. That'll happen in the same, under the same circumstances. Okay, so let's take a look at our old uh, top then. If we've already returned null here that from the size being zero, then the method's done. Otherwise there are values there and the top is a real thing. So we're gonna say top equals uh, top dot next, or get next, I think is what we're gonna call it. That method doesn't exist yet, let's go write it. So we're here in the stack element class, public uh, stack element of type T, get next. Let's return next. There we go. Notice we have the right type there. It's pretty important. We'll head back over here. So top equals top dot get next. That seems good so far. So we've moved the top pointer to the the correct thing. Now we need to get the value out of the old top, and we're just going to return that. So we're going to return old top dot uh, get value. Hmm, that method doesn't exist yet either. Let's go write that. So once again, back over to stack element public. Now, what are we returning? We're returning a type T. We return the value, which is of type T. Hey, we're doing all right so far. Uh, let's see, we'll wait for that to recover here. And, okay, I see what mistake I made here. This is saying that I have an object can't be converted to a T. And that's because up here, this old top, I should have declared it as the correct type of stack element right there. Okay, so now, yeah, our error is gone. Now I fixed my mistake. So when I grabbed old top, I had to keep uh, saying that it was of a certain type. Okay, so now we've been able to pop the correct value. Let's do another one, public. Uh, then we're gonna do the peak. Once again, we're gonna need to do that. Oh, I missed something. When we popped, we had to reduce the size by one. Have to do that before the return statement. Okay, peaking now. Let's see, we're gonna look at the uh, current top value and if it's there, if there is one, then we're gonna return that value. So, but if the size is equal to zero, well, we're gonna return a non-value. So what that looks like in Java with objects is we're gonna return null. If the size is zero, don't even look at it. There's nothing there, return null. Otherwise, we haven't returned, and the, the remaining statements will execute. 
we're going to return top.getValue. Okay, that's pretty good. And one more thing we can do, we can write a method public uh, void empty, which will clear the whole thing out, size equals zero, and top equals null. Okay, we're, we're all done here now. Let's, um, <clears throat> let's write a main method just to test this out. Public static void main string array of arguments. And let's create a new stack object. And once again, we have to put in that type parameter when we do that. So let's do a stack. We'll call it a string stack. New stack. Again, you don't have to put this second part in. And we can push onto it some stuff. So my string stack dot push and we'll put in uh, here I'll put my name in here and we'll do it again and uh, that's that's pretty good so then let's do something like this system dot out dot print line and we will grab from that uh, let's do a peak first my string stack dot peak so that will that should say Grizzly because that was the thing that was pushed on most recently. And then let's do instead of a peak, we'll do a, a pop. And then we'll do another pop and another pop. So let's see what happens when we run this program. Okay, and let's see what we got. Grazley, Grazley, Brandon, and then null because that was when we had no objects left in the stack. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's what we were hoping for. So this is using a generic type. We did not declare in advance that these were going to be storing strings, but when I created it, I said I wanted to put a string in, and so now that's what I can do. If I tried to put something that was not a string in there, like a 5, I would have an error. That's a type problem. And so uh, this particular stack, my string stack, only stores strings. Uh, but if I were to make a different stack, I could have it storing different object types. So those are generics. That's how they work. I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And of course, a like and a subscribe would always be helpful. So thanks very much, and I'll talk to you later.